Hi, this is Carl B. And today I want to do a review of The Heritage of Shannara. Heritage of Shannara is a series of four books written by Terry Brooks and released in the 1990s. Uh, Brooks is best known for his Sword of Shannara series, which was, I believe, came out in the 1970s originally. It's his most famous work. Uh, it's been read by millions of people around the world. Though considered a fantasy classic, uh, many readers had issues with Brooks's original series of three books. And uh, so he's kind of divisive uh, in, in uh, literature and fantasy circles today. So how does the heritage of Shannara measure up to the original trilogy? So there are four books in this series. You have The Signs of Shannara, The Druid of Shannara, The Elf Queen of Shannara, and the fourth book is The Talismans of Shannara. So I have so many things to say about this series and I really don't have time to say them all. So basically I'll just focus on the real question. Uh, well, actually there's two questions. One, will fans of the original Shannara series enjoy these books and two will people that don't like Terry Brooks or that read his first books and you know think that maybe they don't want to read more of his books will those people enjoy this series so so yes the answer to the first question yes I think almost anyone that likes the original Shannara books would like this series even though he has tried to evolve his writing writing and uh, included a lot of new and different themes and uh, writing styles is still in the same universe and uh, similar enough that I'm sure anyone that enjoys the original books will enjoy these. Now as far as the second question, people that either don't like Terry Brooks at all or read the original books but you know when they were young like I did and now they're older think that you know that maybe the books were too too simple or childish or predictable or whatever so you know would they want to read another series of his I think for those people the answer is yes now people that really can't stand Terry Brooks and there are quite a few of them um, they're probably not gonna like it you know anything he writes so I don't know if I'd recommend it to people that really can't stand Terry Brooks but anyone else should should like this series so uh, real briefly uh, the four books it covers there's a new threat to the four lands that could completely destroy all the land and the people and so the ghost of Alanon brings some descendants of the Shonaras um, together to fulfill separate quests that all together um, could destroy this threat and, and heal the earth so oh, what to say about it so the first book I would say unfortunately the first book is the least good of the books for several reasons mostly because it's kind of uh, kind of ridiculous um, the two main characters in the first book are brothers and the way they act and speak and think it's kind of childish and uh, it's repeated a lot throughout the book so it's repetitive and kind of annoying um, to be honest and honestly, if you could find a good synopsis of the first book, you can probably get by with just reading that and then reading the other three books. However, uh, they do introduce a, a uh, main villain in that book. And at the end of the book, um, he talks to um, two of the main characters. Well, really one of the main characters is who he's focused on and tries to convince him that they're really not enemies and um, it tells them several things that for the rest of the series you're trying to figure out are these true or not is this guy really you know evil or not what are his motivations is he completely lying is he you know is he telling the truth about some things or half truths or twisting things so that's one element that's good that I you know I think in the original series uh, villains were pretty you know as people say cookie cutter um, they don't really have any complexity or personality they're just pure evil and that's it you know the old standby so uh, Brooks really tried to improve that in this series okay so that's the first book now the second book 
it's kind of a slog as well. However, um, there's some interesting things about it. Once you get about two thirds of the way in, it starts getting really good, at least I think so. And there's a couple of reasons for that, but one of the main ones is that um, there's a dangerous or, or evil character in this in this second book. And um, what's interesting about it is that he has to work, or I should say, uh, some of the protagonists of this series have to work with this evil character. So that is pretty interesting. And then it sets up towards the end of the book. There's a lot of tensions and a lot of um, conflicts coming. And you can see that, you know, there's some showdowns that are being set up, which I, I found to be, you know, very interesting and enjoyable. And so that was the second book. It was all right. Uh, third book is pretty good, but it's mostly has to do with the elves. So if you have elf burnout, <laughs> you, you know, you don't want to read any more books ever again that have a lot of elves in them it may be a problem for you but other than that it, it's it's a pretty good book um it spends a lot of time in a jungle and with you know monsters basically they're like demons so it's it's you know it's kind of interesting uh, change of of scenery from your typical fantasy scenery and then the fourth book i really like the fourth book now of course you can you know you can kind of predict, or I should say assume, that the protagonists are going to be victorious in the end, like almost every story. However, the fourth book is really good because you don't know by the time you get into it, you really don't know what's going to happen. And it takes um, the character arcs, all the main characters, and secondary characters that are still alive, and um, you know goes back and forth between them. And you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You don't know if everyone's going to survive. I will say that several supporting characters have already died in the series by the time you get to the fourth book. So you don't know if more characters are going to die. You don't know if the characters are going to find each other and help each other and team up. Or, you know, you really don't know what's going to happen. It's not super predictable. At least not to me. I didn't think it was. And it has a lot of good, uh, a lot of good scenes. There's big battles and um, uh, rescues and kind of some more showdowns and that sort of thing. So I found the fourth book to be really enjoyable. I liked it a lot and I think it really makes a series. So once again, if you if you um, are a Terry Brooks fan or just a fantasy fan in general, you will probably enjoy the series. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's much better than his first book, The Sword of Shannara, even though that is a classic, it's very famous. And rightly so, and has, you know, it's very extremely well known, has a big place in um, fantasy. This series, in my opinion, is much improved. He does so many different things uh, and more advanced things. You know, it's still, it's still easy reading, but it's, um, in my opinion, very improved. And it, it has a lot of things that the original ones either don't have, especially the first book. I don't remember the first book having a lot of these... Um, issues and, and, and uh, discussions about, you know, characters being thrust into into these battles and life-changing events and do they really want to go through these changes? Can they handle it? Um, is it better to not have things forced upon you and die or to accept these things and persevere? You know, there's a lot of, of, of themes like that in this series that, uh, that weren't so prevalent before, in my opinion. And... Um, as well as, like I said, a lot of supporting characters die. Well, several supporting characters die in the series. Um, like I said, they have to work with a villain. And so that sets up um, dynamics that I don't think were in any of his books before. Um, like I said, the villain is not uh, so transparent as they may have been in other books of his. So altogether, I think it's very improved. And even though it still has repetitiveness... And like I said, the first book, first book seems kind of annoyingly childish, uh, like watching, I don't know, some kind of Disney preteen <laughs> TV show. And one thing I will have to say is that in the third book, in addition to having a lot of elves, there is one character that has 
the most ridiculous name ever in a series other than Jar Jar Binks. I mean, so that is regrettable. It makes it hard to take that book seriously. And, um, but other than that, it's a really great series and I would highly recommend it except for people that, you know, die hard, uh, opponents of Terry Brooks. They're probably not going to be, not going to be swayed no matter how much he improves his writing. But for everyone else, I say this is a very recommended series and, um, I highly recommend that you read it. Thank you.